right, welcome everyone to the computer science presentation from McMaster Engineering. Um, we're glad to see you here today. Um, we're gonna get started, apologies for the slight delay, and we are going to go through everything you need to know about computer science, about admissions, your application, scholarships, and more. And we'll have time at the end to get to some Q&A, but there is also a Q&A feature um, in this webinar, so feel free to ask questions and we'll be answering them throughout the presentation as well. I'm going to hand things off to Dr. Wolfram Call, who is the Associate Chair for Undergraduate Studies for the Computer Science Program. And I herewith welcome you to McMaster University. Uh, McMaster is in Hamilton, um, the center of which you see there in the background. And uh, McMaster University is uh, immediately adjacent to conservation area, Coots Paradise, which you see with the trees there. And our campus is in between all those trees and uh, at the uh, at one side pretty much of the Coots Paradise water area, which then connects to Lake Ontario in the background over there. You're here to hear about computer science, which is one of the uh, fields and entryways into the Faculty of Engineering. Uh, most engineering programs will come in via Engineering 1, and there are special ways for engineering, biomedical engineering, and there are some bachelor, some several Bachelor of Technology programs. Uh, computer science is now located in the Faculty of Engineering and has direct entry. And it's about computing, which is uh, a wide field that is dealing with solving problems, managing information, creating smart products, but also exploring our world and connecting to other people. So there is lots of different facets to that. So computing is really a rather interdisciplinary affair. Uh, for fields of studies, computing includes several established fields of study like computer science, software engineering, mechatronics, information systems. And our department, which is called Department of Computing and Software, offers the first three for information systems, you would be looking at the School of Business more likely. Uh, computing is interfacing with engineering disciplines, with mathematics, is built on mathematics to a large degree, is interfacing with science, is contributing back to science nowadays quite a lot via data science, is enabling new design approaches. So computing is a very central area in the development nowadays and uh, has lots of different facets. Uh, in the Department of Computing and Software, which is abbreviated as CAIS here, we have three different kinds of programs. So if you come in, you are going to meet people who want in to go into our programs who might be aiming to go into software engineering or mechatronics engineering, but who in the first year will be entering through engineering one or the integrated biomedical engineering and health sciences uh, year one. Uh, whereas for computer science, you would be entering directly via computer science one. So entering via Computer Science 1 targets our computer science program, which is just about computer science, whereas entrance via engineering opens as one of the options to go into software engineering, uh, which is an engineering based program in software development, targeting software development in engineering contexts and the multidisciplinary program of mechatronics engineering, where electrical and mechanical topics join software topics to make up a multidisciplinary engineering specialist uh, at the interface between different fields. With computer science, you are choosing uh, essentially a different direction, a, a more self-directed uh, direction in what you might want to use your computer computing knowledge for in your career. If you wanted to use your computing knowledge to or work with other engineers, then you would probably uh, targeting software engineering and get the engineering education that enables you to talk with the other engineers. If that is not a goal, if you want to go into banking or geographical information systems or many other things, then computer science will be the more flexible basis to get you started in the direction that you choose into the uh, 
studies that you essentially design by the fact that this is a very flexible program. What is computer science? Uh, a Turing Award winner, and the Turing Award is the Nobel Prize of computer science, so to speak. Joris uh, Hartmanis, he says that computer science is a new science among the other science, and it differs significantly from these other sciences, for example, physics, chemistry, and biology. Because in these other sciences, the study to a large extent is of the world that exists. People in these other sciences are trying to understand this world so as to explain and predict phenomena. However, in computer science, we are interested primarily in what can exist and how to an analyze and describe the possible in information processing. So it's a science that has to conceptualize and create the intellectual tools and theories to help us imagine, analyze, and build the feasible possible. And this uh, goal, this uh, direction towards building the feasibly possible is one of the motivations that justified moving computer science out of the Faculty of Sciences, which is in the context of those other sciences, into the Faculty of Engineering, where engineering traditionally has been about building the feasibly possible. But computer science is still different from the other engineering disciplines, so that justifies the separate entrance. Since the move into the Faculty of Engineering, this is a Bachelor of Assign Applied Science program, so the degree you would be getting as a Bachelor of Applied Science, not a Bachelor of Engineering. And the entry is also separate from the engineering programs, namely via Computer Science One. We are currently in a phase of growth of the Computer Science program. Uh, a couple of years ago, our nominal intake was still 45 students. Uh, this fall, our en enrollment target was 160. I think we exceeded slightly. And the goal is currently to grow to 200 Jew. So there's a significant growth going on in the computer science enrollment. This is becoming a much larger degree, a much larger cohort with a much more varied offering than we were able to offer before. It's a very flexible program. As I mentioned before, it's geared towards you deciding what you want to do with it, where you want to take it both within computer science, where you have six technical electives in your uh, two last years, and with an eye to possible applications of computer science, where you can choose a minor in the space of 10 open electives that the computer science program has sort of preserved from its previous status as a science program. Science programs have that design that they have this kind of number of technical uh, of open electives. That's enough for you to do a minor in mathematics, to do a minor in geography if you want to work on maps, to do a minor in linguistics if you want to work on translation, to do a minor in biology if you want to go into genome analysis. Uh, it's up to you. So you can use these open electives for anything, for anything in another area, but you could also strengthen your computing knowledge in these slots beyond the technical electives that you have to take in the last two years. So for the structure of the program, I already mentioned all those open electives, two in first year, two in second year, two in third year, and uh, four in the last year. Uh, leaving more open electives in the later year means that you're a bit slow in deciding where you want to do a minor. You can still catch up and do most of your minor in your last year. And we are probably the only program that has five computer science courses in first year. So there are five compulsory computer science in first year. Two of these are practice and experience courses. Uh, in first term, you have two programming courses, and that is then expanded and developed in the second term using these two practice and experience courses to get you set up for reason for interesting and uh, on topic internships already after first year. And discrete mathematics is an important foundation for much of the further 
development of computer science core topics in level two and then in level three. You will be done with the compulsory core courses in level three and have then only one compulsory capstone project in level four, which otherwise you will be able to fill with open electives and technical electives. So that's the structure of the program that would be waiting for you. Five computer science courses in first year besides the usual three math courses and your first two open electives in first year. Then go full power on core courses in computer science in level two, eight courses there, and then start diversifying in level three, where you start having two of those six electives and further diversification and individualization in level four. That's your program structure. This has come out of a major curriculum redesign where we now have these five courses. Previously, we just had three. And uh, the redesign made in particular meaningful internships after level one much more likely. We have been able to move the algorithms and data structures into first term in level two, which is before the internship interviews. And algorithm and data structures are sort of the go-to topic for computing interviewers to ask questions about in the, in the interview. So we had questions about that for a long time. Now we've been able to do it, move it to first term. You can go fitter into your internship interviews after level two. We also have the database course now in level two instead of level three before you do your second internship. So that again, makes you much more likely to land a relevant job because you can say in your interviews, I'm going to, I'm, I'm now in a database course, I will have finished that before I start my internship. So databases, I know the basics, I know the fundamentals, I can get into more detailed uh, applications or implementation questions if needed makes you much more usable in your second internship. And as I already mentioned, we moved the open electives from level one to level four. So you can have more flexibility of when to do most of the courses for your minor. And by finishing core courses by the end of level three, instead of only in term two of level four, we can have technical electives that build on any core courses in level four. And you can have capstone projects that you go into already having taken, having taken the networks course, already having taken the compiler course, which previously would have been taken in level four term two. So now everything in level four can get much more interesting due to the curriculum redesign, which is right now being phased in. Uh, the first students in the new curriculum are now in level two and are going into level three in fall when you would be starting into level one. Uh, besides actual studying, I've been mentioning internships already a lot. Uh, Co-op is an important offering of uh, degrees at uh, in the Faculty of Engineering of McMaster. There's a large and very competent co-op office who helps with uh, making it possible that you do your co-op your way. There are different ways to go through the co-op program and the co-op office helps you to find positions to succeed in the positions there are special preparation courses. You have options to go after each summer for four months or after year three, you can do a whole, whole year internship, which many students actually extend to a 16 month internship, but four months and eight months internships are also possible even after year three. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a large co-op office which are there to help you with that. Uh, to, there's an online prep course to prepare you for navigating the co-op formalities, navigating interaction with the co-op office and getting prepared. At least two thirds of the engineering students complete some co-op as part of their degree. Uh, very many of the computer science students, most computer science students are actually registered in the co-op options. 
And uh, recently, over three quarters of the co-op work terms were actually longer than four months, because we hear again and again that employers much prefer longer internships where the students actually can become useful uh, for doing some work after getting started on the internship. So probably most of our students actually take a full year or 16 months internship after year three, but there are different options to do it. You could just limit your co-op internship to four months each in each summer or stretch things out slightly. Lots of different options. Uh, employers for co-op love CS students and uh, we are faced with the, well, on our side, it's a big problem that many students will go into fourth year already knowing which employer they go to after year four. Uh, they won't be available for grad studies. They already have an offer for what they're going to do after they graduate uh, after their fourth year. So employers are generally happy with our students. Many, many of our students go into fourth year with an employment offer for after graduations. And each year we have 4,000 plus positions posted for co-op, which means the opportunities are pretty endless. And there are only around uh, that number of students uh, who look for positions. So students normally definitely find co-op positions. And the job market is just excellent. You'd be mostly aiming for immediately software development and possibly system administration. But in many cases, you'd be aiming to apply your computing skills in some other fields uh, with computer science, less in engineering and more in science business, art, entertainment, computational music. The job outlook is just excellent right now for all computing professionals. Uh, you can put on top of your computer science some professional degree in a different direction like business law or medicine. And of course, uh, we do hope that some of you will make it into graduate programs to pursue graduate studies in computer science or in interdisciplinary programs involving computing and further advance the field on that side as well. Uh, the job market is right now just seriously skewed. Right now, if you look, for example, at US Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, for their projections for new job growth in the decade we are currently in, they project that most new jobs are in computer and mathematical occupations far more than all the other engineering occupations and architecture on top, far more than the conventional sciences. The jobs are in computing. The jobs are in computing and the jobs in computing pay. Median annual wages in 2018 in US dollars had were quite a bit higher for computing jobs than for other jobs. So if you look for job opportunities, you're right here, uh, especially if you have the bill and the qualifications and the interests to be good, uh, to succeed in computing, we are here to help you with that. Uh, you have to bring in the right attitude to succeed. If you go through successfully, then essentially all the doors are open and you are on a path to excellent circumstances after your studies. And during your study, it doesn't have to be all work. Uh, you can turn some of what you might call as play into opportunity and even course credit. McMaster University in engineering offers course credit for students participating in both technical and non-technical clubs and teams. And that is for computer science students just as well as for other engineering students. And that involves things like hackathons like solar car and many other projects. There are over 70 clubs and teams affiliated with faculty of engineering 
which altogether have over 15,000 members. And the computer science students themselves, they organize into the Computer Science Society, which does itself organize, hackathons organize events for students, organize events that computer science students with larger scope involving other people, uh, then active society and uh, bring additional life to the department. And now I'm going to hand over to Nancy Bolan to talk a bit about admissions and applications, which I'm not directly concerned with, no expert in, but she definitely is. Perfect, thank you. Hi everyone, um, I didn't introduce myself at the beginning, so I will do it now. My name is Lindsay Bolan, I'm the Director of Outreach and Engagement for the Faculty of Engineering. Um, and I, I manage a student recruitment team that is here to help you throughout the application process. You can always uh, reach us at thinkeng at mcmaster.ca and one of my colleagues will put that in the chat. So if you have any questions at all about admissions or um, anything really, um, if you wanna connect with a current student, you can, can reach out to us through that email and we will set that up for you. Um, so as far as admissions, I'm going to go over just the requirements for Ontario students. If you're not from Ontario, again, um, emailing us through that email that will be in the chat will be your best route forward. Um, for admissions to computer science, it is fairly competitive, even though our program is growing, um, we have far more applications than, than spots for students. Um, that said, um, it definitely is an achievable um, process for students and we require English for you, calculus for you, plus two of any of those ones from the list. So chemistry, physics, computer science, biology, earth and space sciences, or computer engineering technology. Then we need two more grade 12 URM courses on top of that to round out a six course average. The minimum expected cutoff will be 90%. So that's the, the minimum expected cutoff. Um, that said, likely in most cases, our minimum expected cutoff, um, the, the actual cutoff to make you competitive for admission is usually two to 3% higher than that at least. Um, admission is by selection. So what this means is that having the minimum cutoff doesn't necessarily guarantee you admission. We also look at a supplementary application. Um, and this is actually new this year for the supplementary application. So I'll go over what that is and what it entails, but it is a mandatory component of the application for all McMaster engineering programs. So that includes computer science, BTEC, engineering, um, as well as the integrated biomedical engineering and health sciences program. And it's an opportunity for us to meet you virtually um, through this, this video interview. So there are online questions with video and text. So somebody is asking you a question by video um, and the responses should be focused on communications and problem solving. Three of the questions you will respond to by video and one of the questions will be a typed written question. The whole thing takes approximately 20 minutes. So it's not a, it's not a very lengthy process. So as I mentioned, there are three video responses. You'll have one minute to prepare after the, the video question is, is posed to you. And then you'll have two minutes to answer after that one minute of preparation. For the one written response, you'll have 10 minutes to answer. Um, here are some practice questions. These are just sample practice questions. They're not the real thing, but it gives you a sense of what kind of questions you'll be asked. They're not testing your technical knowledge in any way. Um, so for instance, what does being resourceful mean to you and why is it important? Tell us about a time management strategy you used and why does it work? What circumstances make it okay to take risk versus playing it safe? Um, there's also some questions about you know, who inspires you or sources of inspiration, that kind of thing, or a time when you took on a leadership role, um, time when you encountered difficult situations. So almost like your standard job interview questions, to be honest, but mostly focused on communications and problem solving. My best tips for students for this is really to be yourself, to practice and be prepared, you know, have some sample um, scenarios and, and examples prepared. Ideally, these are examples from your real life that you can draw from, either from maybe from school or from clubs and teams that you've been a part of, um, from your family life. It really could be anything. Um, try, try to kind of harness a concrete example um, as opposed to just talking in generalities. Um, be clear and concise, you know, be in a well-lit room, be, you know, 
comfortably but professionally dressed. You don't need to wear a suit and tie or, you know, a dress by any means, but maybe not in your pajamas and, and brush your hair, that kind of thing. So it's really not anything to be stressed out about. Um, just, you know, again, be prepared. You have unlimited practice opportunities. So once you apply, you'll get access to the platform and you can practice and practice and practice for months up until the deadline, um, which is in January. So yeah, I hope that answers your questions about the supplementary application. Um, there's been some, some Q and A's about that as well. There's, there's one really important link that's in the, the Q and A as well about the question about SEP apps. Um, the next thing I'll talk about is scholarship applications. So this is a separate application. It's completely optional. Um, but for those of you who feel like you, you know, either need the extra uh, financial support, or if you've done exceptional things outside of the classroom and are looking for that, you know, additional acknowledgement for the excellent work that you've done, then for sure fill out our scholarship applications. The Faculty of Engineering has the largest scholarship portfolio um, at the University for Undergraduate Studies. We have more than $1 million in scholarships that we give out every year. The application is completed on a separate platform called AwardSpring, which you'll have access to after you apply and after you've been given a McMaster login. Um, so basically there's three steps to the, to the scholarship application. The first is to tell us about any academic awards you've, you've been able to achieve, any extracurricular activities, and any other accomplishments really. Um, step two is to answer three short questions. So there's a question um, that touches on leadership. There's a question that touches on impact in your community or your family or your school. And there's a question about what's, what's your big idea uh, to solve one of the, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so there's three short answers. And then all you need to do is upload two letters of reference. These can be from a teacher, a coach, um, someone you've volunteered with. Um, really anyone. They shouldn't be from a family member, an aunt or an uncle or a parent um, or a friend, just someone in any kind of kind of official capacity that can speak to your character or your performance. The really cool thing about our scholarships is that we even have some specialized scholarships for students who have been involved in things like FIRST Robotics, um, DECA, which is a business competition in high school, um, as well as tons of scholarships that are focused on leadership and um, involvement in the community. And every one of our scholarships for, for this application is accompanied by a research experience award. So the summer after your first year, we're basically guaranteeing you a co-op position that is in the form of a research position um, alongside a faculty member within the Faculty of Engineering. Um, there's also an opportunity if you choose to work in a startup um, and use that you know, estimated $6,000 worth of funding to work. Um, in that capacity. So it's, it's very unique to McMaster. We have one of the largest or the largest um, undergraduate research programs of any university in Canada, uh, definitely supporting our top students in that way. Next slide, perfect. So I just wanted to take a bit to talk about um, Ember. So Ember is our Engineering Mentorship and Bridging Education Resources Program. Ember is a pre-university prep program that happens in the summer prior to your first year. Um, it is 100% free and completely optional. Again, it's a three week online prep program where you'll do learning modules in math, physics, chemistry, and computing. Um, you don't have to do all of them. So in computer science, perhaps you would opt out of chemistry um, if you wanted to. And there's also fireball family information sessions where you can get to know the student um, community and the student leaders. Our Connect Interactive Workshops, which are an opportunity to, to get to know the program that you're entering in a little bit more detail, um, meet your professors, meet other students, upper year students, find mentors right off the bat. Um, and there's also live support. So in addition to asynchronous modules, so videos that you can watch throughout this, there's live support and TAs that will work through the material with you. So the goal here really is for students to feel 100% prepared to start their university studies right in first year. And lastly, I just wanted to talk about an event that is happening next Saturday, and that's the Ultimate Mac and Changout. So the Ultimate Mac and Changout is an open house that we are hosting virtually um, through our Hopin platform. And it's a chance for you to connect with current students within the Faculty of Engineering. So there will be um, computer science students as well as students from all of our, our Faculty of Engineering programs, as well as representatives from our co-op office. Um, there will be an admissions booth, so if you have some specific admissions questions, that's also a good time 
um, to come out and ask your questions. And we'll throw the link to that as well in the chat. Uh, but we hope to see everybody virtually next Saturday for the Ultimate Mac and Hangout. And I'm going to hand it back to Dr. Call, who will um, wrap up the presentation. Thank you. There you actually see Coots Paradise and in the background Lake Ontario. Uh, so as you're heading into computer science, one important thing is uh, that we are accepting computer science courses as an option among the admission requirements and we are offering some computing content in the ember summer courses but there is no expectation and requirement really that you have previous computing knowledge many of you will have previous computing knowledge but if you do not have previous computing knowledge you are just as welcome and we start one of our first term first year courses computer science one jc3 with teaching you about functional programming which probably only very few of you will have seen before starting at university so that puts everybody on the equal footing uh, it even might be an advantage for those who haven't done any computing before because they have not been spoiled into the wrong ways of thinking for that kind of approach to doing computing, which is a very powerful approach. So don't be worried if you don't have previous computing experience. If you feel that computing is where you want to go, we are going to get you the experience. And you will join a tight-knit community of computer science students who are looking after each other and the upper years are organizing things in the computer science society society to involve the new students to make this work for everybody together and make the study enjoyable for everybody as uh, much as possible you start into First year, I already mentioned with two practice and experience courses in the second uh, term, and there are three more practice and experience courses spread it over spread over the upper years. So we do put an emphasis on equipping you for work out there in the real world in industry, uh, wherever you choose to go. Uh, the co-op options that you have through the engineering co-op office give you well-paid and flexible co-op options that you can earn money and uh, gain valuable experience through working in an industry and help you make up your mind which way you want to go and through the fact that we have five computing courses in first year uh, you have a higher probability of actually getting a meaningful internship after first year which will help you guide yourself, decide for yourself what is important for you as you progress through the remaining core courses and then choose your electives. And there are some of the electives, uh, effectively one quarter of the curriculum is electives, a combination of technical electives within computer science and open electives that you could co populate with more computer science courses, but that you could also use to uh, earn a minor in a completely different subject. So that is a brief review of the strong points. Let me just uh, remind you at the end that mathematics is important for computer science. Uh, mathematical approach is important for justifying that your software is correct. Uh, it's the tool, mathematics is the tool for justifying that the software cor is correct. Mathematics is the tool for specifying what the software is supposed to do. Uh, mathematics is frequently the subject of what the software is doing in scientific computing, in data science, where mathematical concepts guide what is calculated and what is then used for uh, recommendations in the real world. So all kinds of mathematics are really important for computer science and a willingness to be strong in mathematics is therefore an essential ingredient. Uh, some of the mathematics that you will meet in computer science is completely different from the mathematics you may have mostly seen so far, which is probably continuous mathematics, 
very important in computer science are discrete mathematics and logics, which are a different flavor of mathematics and central to specify software to be precise about what software is supposed to do and make an argument why the software is actually doing it. And apart from that, an open mind and a wide horizon are important for computer science because it has so many possible uses and so many things working together. Uh, knowledge is still important, uh, in particular, uh, because some things are just impossible. Uh, you might be sometimes tempted to think, oh, I can Google it, but if you don't know what to Google for, then you don't know what to Google it. And if something is just impossible and you're not aware of these kinds of lim limitations, then you might be looking in a completely wrong direction and try to implement something that cannot possibly be implemented. It's important to be aware of the limitations and that said it's still worth pushing boundaries but you definitely need to know what you're pushing against so actually having the knowledge of the foundations is important do not fall into the trap to think i can google everything you can't you need to know things to actually become an expert to actually make useful contributions and as you will after graduation join the workforce. Uh, skills will be important and therefore skills are already important as you go through your studies. And that includes programming skills, documentation skills, specification skills, reasoning skills, presentation skills, more general communication skills. Uh, we are here to help you learn a lot and acquire these skills. That's what the program is about, what it's designed for. You are coming here to learn a lot and be successful afterwards. Go for Computer Science 1 at McMaster. And if you have any questions, as Lindsay already said, email thinkeng at mcmaster.ca. Uh, there you will find responses and point us to more information uh, about what might be waiting here for you. Thank you very much for your patience. Fantastic, thank you so much. And I see there's been quite a few questions in the Q&A, most of which we've been able to answer um, by text, but if there's any questions um, that you have, we're willing to take them live. Um, I wanted to also, I'm gonna put a link in the chat to um, our student ambassador platform. So this is our, our platform where you can connect to current students um, and you can chat with them, ask all your questions, find out more. Um, you can kind of search through first to find, you know, somebody perhaps with the same background or interests as you um, that you might wanna connect with, maybe someone from, with the same, from the same country or the same cultural background as you as well. Um, and it's a, it's a fairly simple um, chat platform that you would sign up for. And I already put in the, the chat as well, the link to our event on next, that is next Saturday, as well as the link to the supplementary application um, page, which is where you will find kind of everything you need to know about the supplementary application. Um, there was a question there about when you receive the supplementary application um, link, and usually that is right away. We're just finalizing the platform, so it should be up um, within a couple of weeks, at which point anyone who's already applied will get an email. But if you haven't yet applied um, and you're applying sometime after you know, November 15th, 16th, I would say, usually you would get that, that email um, pretty much right away or within a couple of days. So um, it, it's there for you to, to do practice questions um, before you submit your application. So we'll stay on just a little bit longer to answer any last questions that you might have and keeping an eye on the, on the chat. Um, we're going to be doing this presentation all over again next Tuesday at 7 p.m. as well, Eastern time. So if you think of a question over the weekend and you, you want to come back, you're very welcome to join us for a second presentation. Um, hear everything all over again and ask your questions. And you're also very welcome um, to watch the, the session um, recording, which will be posted on, um, on the website and will be emailed out to anybody who registered. All right, so I don't see any additional questions in the chat. 
So I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we really hope that you apply and that you reach out to us if you have absolutely any questions about computer science at McMaster. But thanks for joining us. Bye everyone.